This is big bro, taking over the show. Richard is a very keen listener of music. He just doesn't like my music very much. If he sees me on TV, he wonders why I'm, is my dad that's right next to me on the screen. It's a little bit confusing for him, but like it hurts a bit when he switches my, my song off and puts on one of his favorite records. <laughs> With autism being a spectrum disorder, there's many things that may trigger a meltdown. Some of Richard's triggers are patterns and, and you know funny shapes. Also, environmental changes. When you're dealing with someone with autism who is also non-verbal, you don't get a direct answer of, this is why I'm, I'm going through this um, anxiety. You don't get that dialogue, you know? You just have to guess and kind of wing it. When Richard Michael was two and a half, um, his mother was pregnant, so we decided to move house. When we actually moved in, we noticed that there were places in the house that Richard just wasn't comfortable being in. Um, number one was the living room. Richard could not be in there for longer than 30 seconds to a minute without having a real bad panic. He would literally hang on to the walls and where the couch was, he would be holding onto the couch. Very much like someone was drowning in, and in rough waters at that. You never want to see your, your child in any kind of anguish. So, you know, it's really uncomfortable for as a parent to watch him going through that. We knew we had to do something about it. So we had to be very vigilant. And uh, we worked out that it was the carpet. The carpet was terrible. It was like a really old Victorian carpet with a really bad, intricate patterns woven into it. Recurring, repeating, geometric. And these shapes for Richard, they have like a million different possibilities, a million different ways that they could go. It had to be like a fluid thing because when he goes swimming and sometimes he can't handle it, maybe, you know, the water is too deep, he starts panicking. And every time he was on this carpet, he would panic in the same way. So we ordered new carpets immediately. As soon as the carpets were changed and became neutral, he was happy to be in there and, and his whole demeanor changed when he was in there. When Richard is about to have a sensory overload, sometimes it's predictable. Sometimes you can see it coming. So when I, I, I think something is gonna trigger him, I may avoid it. But I think being a dad as well, I kind of want him to meet his challenges head on. It's one of those things that I find really difficult to balance out what I should protect him from, from what I shouldn't. But you know, now that he's eight years old, I find myself letting him go and pushing the boundaries rather than being overly protective of Richard Michael, yeah. How long have you been playing with the autistics? Uh, I'd have to say about, yeah, I'd say five miserable months. 